Before we crack on with the video, I just wanted to let you know that iDriver Classic is sponsored by Adrian Flux. I've also got all my cars insured with them and I also have Flux Rescue because guess what? All my cars do break down, even if I pretend they don't. If you haven't got your car insured yet or you're looking for a new renewal quote, click the link below and get in touch with the Adrian Flux team. Hi guys, it's Steph from iDriver Classic and today I'm back with one of the most exciting vehicles that I spotted this summer. It's the fastest Dodge van in the West, or certainly West Yorkshire. It's Paul's Dodge Space Van from 1981. As you can see, it's been quite heavily modified, but it's also got a really interesting story. So Paul and I had a conversation and he said, are you bothered that it's modified? And I said, absolutely not. It's a fantastic rescue story. It's been all over. It's got a brilliant history. Let's put it on the channel and see what everyone else thinks. It can do zero to 60 in an insanely short amount of time. And we're gonna to get to take it out today. Probably gonna to have to voice over that driving section because it's super loud, it's super warm because wait till you see where the engine is. And yeah, let's go and have a look. Now usually on these walk arounds, we talk about the history of the vehicle, but today it's a little bit different because I'm gonna tell you about this van in particular and the quite frankly bonkers list of changes made by Paul to create the van of his dreams. Now, first off, a lot of people are going to see this van and immediately be horrified. Oh, it's been ruined. Oh, God. Well, look, I know it's not being preserved as a standard van, but the van didn't arrive with Paul as a concourse example. And in fact, it has actually had quite a hard life. So it started life as a gas board van until 1992 and then spent 19 years being used as a shed. It was then taken on by a man called Alan, who was a guitarist and touring with Gloria Gaynor. Now, he didn't need the van anymore, and so he sold it on to Paul. Now, Alan did a little bit himself. He got the chassis repaired and some of the lower panels replaced. But really, it's Paul who took this van on and created what we see today and really kept it going for the future. So everything started off far more original, and Paul even rebuilt the original engine himself because it had big end failure. But then he said, well, if the engine packs up again, I'm just going to put a V8 engine into it. Now, the first idea was to just put a standard 6.6 .6 engine from a 1979 Lincoln Continental into the van. And so what Paul did was he went on eBay and he found a unit in a scrap car. Now, it's due to just drop in as a standard lump, but then Paul got really badly influenced by his friend called Tim. And they said, actually, why don't we strip it down and make it something a little bit more special? So they stripped the engine down and found it had little to no wear. So they sent it away for a cylinder hone and fitted the engine with compression racing pistons. It also benefited from a load of other stuff, including a high lift cam, a big valve cylinder head, yellow terra pe pedestal mount rockers. It's got a Holly 60, 600 CFM four barrel carb, a high flow oil pump, an MSD ignition system, a Holly fuel pump and a mad exhaust, which is a two times four into one exhaust with two straight through flow master boxes. I mean, how much does all this cost? It's incredible. But this is what we do when we love vehicles. Now, the gearbox is a standard Ford C6 three-speed auto paired with a Land Rover prop shaft. The rear axle is taken from a Rover P5 and it's mounted on a five-link with coilovers and even the rear wheels have been changed. Now, they're off a Jeep. The front axle is standard, surprisingly, but fitted with Toyota Hilux shockers and the front wheels are standard as well. Brakes are drums all round, so you're going to see me take some care today, even though we have got servo assistance fitted. And it's got an electric handbrake now, so usually it would have had the standard one as per that comma van that we tested. And um, I'm going to show you that once we hop inside. The interior is still very much a work in progress. Now you'll notice when we get inside, we're going to be having a look at that slightly customised dash. And the seats that you see in the front are from an MGF. And Paul got those on eBay for 99p. Now the front's doing all right, but as you've probably already noticed, the rear needs a little bit of TLC. So that's the next focal point for Paul, who's basically going to turn all that into a camper. But I tell you what, you wouldn't catch me out in it in summer because with that engine in the back, it is absolutely boiling hot. And when we filmed this in winter, it was still pretty hot. So I can only imagine what it's going to be like in summer. 
Now, before we have a proper look inside and I talk you through that dash, including how we start the vehicle, I'm going to hand over to Paul from the YouTube channel Man Facility Metalworks, who owns this van and is going to tell us a little bit more about it. And we're also going to get some racing footage. Hi, everybody. This is my 1981 Dodge space van. Uh, my name's Paul and I've owned it for eight years now. It, um, it wasn't built to race, um, but I took it to the drag strip and yeah, it's quick. It beat a guy that's won trophies on my second ever run. Um, it'll do 77 miles an hour in 201 meters from a standing start. Um, so it is very, very scary, but also lots of fun. <laughs> Now it's a funny one because occasionally people say to me, do you mind putting modified stuff on our Java Classic? And if I'm honest, it's the bonkers stuff that I enjoy the most. Things like this, that snuggy, what was that little red thing that I tested that was haunted? Anyway, these are my favourite sorts of tests because you always have really, really lots and lots of fun. And coming inside here today, if you remember that test I did on the comma van way back when when i started our driver classic i did point out that it was very basic but of course this is paul's mad machine that he has done so much to and there are a lot of usable bits and pieces in here for example this charger up here you can charge your phone as you go along you've got paul's stereo and in fact the stereo that's sitting here usually i've taken the front of is Paul stereo from the 90s. So when it turned on, the music was so loud. It was like, boom, Bob the Jam. I was like, oh my God, it's too, <laughs> it's too much for Sedate Sunday for this. And then over here, this panel, we'll talk about in a little bit because we need this to turn the car on. Now you've probably noticed these mad little spikes. Now I had to be very careful getting in because they nearly took the old beehive out. And I thought, we're not having that, not at the start of the video. And they're coming down. We've got this, you probably saw this from the outside. This is one of those bonkers bits and pieces that's on the car. It's a plastic skeleton hand, spelling out V8 because why not? You've got your glove box, that's pretty much one of the only standard things in here, along with the door card. And then coming into the centre, this area here hasn't really changed too much, apart from this, which we're going to talk about in just a second. So you've got the radio here. Now this isn't the original sharp radio from when the van would have been new, but it is correct for the era. Coming down, you've got this little ashtray. Now, I thought the ashtray was quite cool because when I opened it up, I spotted a period correct little token for crossing a toll bridge on there. Now, as promised, I thought I'd discuss this. This is our handbrake. So if you remember when we tested the comma, the handbrake would have been down on my right-hand side, which is what it would have been on this as well for the Dodge van. But now, so Paul was telling me in lockdown, he was sorting out the handbrake, couldn't get the cables because it was the pandemic and there was a lockdown. So he said, do you know what? Actually, I'm going to use my brain and I'm going to do something different. And it's now got an electric handbrake on. So to pop that off, you pop it up, and then to pop it back on, you just push, push that down twice. You just need to have the car on when you're doing that. Now you probably noticed when we looked inside that it has only got two pedals on the floor, which means, of course, it is automatic transmission. It's a three-speed auto, um, and uh, <laughs> this has been made, apparently, out of a walking stick and what looks to be a compass. There is, no, uh, there is no lack of imagination in this van. That's one thing I can give it. Now, coming down here, you've got the radiator. And um, I just want to add as well that even though it's quite cold today, it's absolutely roasting in here. Driving this in summer would not be the one for me. But anyway, you've got your radiator down here. This gold piece here, this is actually an original porthole from World War II. There is so much going on in here. Now, coming in front of you, this looks pretty much as it would have when the van was new. You've got your speedo, which unfortunately isn't working, um, but the mileage is about correct. It's on 
just shy of 70k from you. You've got your fuel gauge, your temperature gauge, and you've got your oil pressure gauge, which is something that Paul has fitted. Now, would it be a proper test without showing you some wipers? So Ian, this one is for you because I spotted that triangle of doom sticker and thought, well, I'd be doing a disservice if I didn't show you the wipers because this is quite the triangle. Are you all ready? So two speed wipers. Now I have been reliably informed that when water comes down onto here, it just ends up pushing it onto here and it's um, a bit of a painful manoeuvre, but hey, Paul's having a lot of fun in this. And it is worth noting as well that a lot of people do watch tests like this and say, oh, does that person drive that very much? I feel like I never see Paul out of this van. Every time I see it, I've seen him at work in it, I've seen him at shows in it. It always seems to be everywhere. So that's one of the nicest things about this is that, of course, it could have ended up on the scrap heap and it could be a Heinz bean tin. But no, instead, it's been rescued and Paul's done all sorts of marvellous things with it. But of course, that's not really what you wanted to hear. You want to hear that V8 engine because this, of course, is the fastest Dodge in the West or certainly West Yorkshire. So let's get the car started up and you can hear Van keep saying car. Let's get the van started up and you can hear what she sounds like. Now what I wanted to do there was go quiet for a bit so that you could hear and experience what it was like for me as a driver the first time I got into it. Now of course this is really, really modified so it's very different to the usual Comma vans, the usual Dodge vans. If you want to see something a lot more original and find out what it would be like, if you go back, way back to my videos, I did the Comma van with Henry two or three years ago. And that was very different to this because it was very standard, it hadn't really been modified. Whereas this feels like worlds apart from that original comma van. Now there's some things I do like about it and some things that I don't. So if you think back to the original video, if you watched it, in that video we talked about how exciting it was, but it was kind of slow and it was a little bit sluggish and it was hard to keep up with traffic. In this now, after all Paul's modifications, you can go from zero to 60 without even coming out of that first gear. It's almost terrifying if I'm honest, because as you come round corners, and you'll have probably seen it as we've driven already, you're having to do a lot of steering. It's very labor intensive. So almost so much more than it was when we took out that original comma van. This feels like we're steering a lot more. It, I mean, the, you know, those, those chunky Jeep wheels do help with the bigger tires on, but it's just, oh, it's a real handful, if I'm honest, in a way that I wasn't quite anticipating. And it's absolutely deafening inside. And it's hard, really, to take out something that's so modified like this and give you a fair assessment. And I'll tell you why. Not because it's got all the modifications so you can't judge it fairly, because I've taken out that comma van. It's a bit of a weird one, because when you take out something that's really highly modified and it's been done, by the person that you're borrowing the vehicle off, it's tough because you're not just critiquing the vehicle, but you're critiquing them as a person as well. Because the more modifications you put onto a vehicle and turn it more and more and more into the vehicle of your dreams, and then you borrow that vehicle of dreams off the person who's done it all, it feels like you're not just critiquing them, and their, sorry, it feels like you're not just critiquing their vehicle, but critiquing them as a person as well. And so for me, I love what Paul's done. I love the fact that he's taken a van, which at the time I've been taking it on, was very low value. It probably would have been broken down for parts. It probably didn't have much life left in it. 
and he's gone at it with his full personality, his list of things that he really wanted from a van and he's built the fastest commerce slash dodge van out there and done something really different with it and he's not just keeping it for those special days, he's taking it out, he's enjoying it and he's really made it into something and given the van a second life. So whilst it's not something I've really enjoyed driving or something I would take on myself, I love the fact that Paul's done it and he talks a lot about it on his YouTube channel so you can check it out. I think it's Man Facility Metalworks and yeah, you can see more of it there. But for me, I'm going to hand back the keys and say thank you, Paul. And until next Sunday from me, take care and drive safely. Thank you.